G'day guys, how's it going? My name is CJ. Hope you guys all are having a great holiday period. But today we're going to be talking about smartwatches. So smartwatches have pretty much disappeared from the consciousness of consumers these days and you rarely see anyone wearing one. Chances are if you do see someone wearing one, it's going to be an Apple Watch. Of course you do see Fitbits floating around here and there, but they don't exactly fall into smartwatch territory. But then they do present an interesting point. People tend to buy Fitbit or fitness trackers because they're affordable. Unless you're an Apple Watch user, they're not really compelling enough for anyone to go out and buy, mainly because they're bloody expensive. And so they're only genuinely essential to only a small niche of the market. To give you an idea of the poor value that people get out of smartwatches, in Australia, a Series 3 Apple Watch starts at 460 Australian dollars, a Samsung Gear S3 costs 450, a Huawei Watch 2 costs 480, and then you have other models like the Garmin Phoenix 5, which go upwards of 800 Australian dollars. It's all pretty ridiculous, and thanks to its pretty poor feature to value ratio, you can see why it hasn't exactly flourished. But what if I told you that there was a smartwatch that ran Android Wear, performed really well, and didn't cost a pretty penny to buy? Could it end up saving the smartwatch category? Well, I've been using the TickWatch E for the last few weeks now, and I think it's time for us to have a chat about it. So, let's take a look. To start off with, the TicWatch E is pretty basic when it comes to smartwatches. There's no shiny bezels, it's not exactly slim, it's made of a polycarbonate shell, and overall, it's pretty muted. It comes with a black silicon strap that's quite comfortable, and it's also customizable as well. It accepts 20mm watch straps, which is pretty standard. There's a single button on the left acting as the home button, and that's it in terms of tactile controls. It seems pretty simple, but then there's elegance in simplicity, and the TicWatch E certainly is simple, and I love that. But don't mistake simplicity for poor quality, because you would certainly be wrong. It sports a brilliant 400x400 400 400 OLED circular screen, has nice pleasing punchy colors and really deep blacks. It also gets plenty bright when using it outdoors. Thankfully it also has all the smartwatch basics as well like a heart rate sensor, GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, an IP67 water resistance rating. It also has a very simple magnetic charging solution which kind of reminds you of the Pebble watches of old. It does emit NFC and cellular connectivity which is a shame and quite disappointing but I think for most people and at this price point it's not that big of a compromise to make. And then powering it all is a MediaTek dual core CPU and 512 megabytes of RAM. Pair these specs with a pretty bare bones rendition of Android Wear and you've got an experience that is extremely smooth and extremely fast. Animations and navigating the UI is buttery smooth and there really wasn't any noticeable lag. That being said, 99% of the interactions you're going to be making with this watch is going to be via its touchscreen since there's no other way of interacting with the UI. And because of that, it's going to turn into a fingerprint magnet. And for those who aren't familiar with Android Wear, it'll be a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to using the UI, but at least it provides you with a fairly straightforward and basic tutorial when you first load it up. If you're coming from an Apple Watch or a Samsung Gear, it will take a little bit of getting used to, but overall, the learning curve isn't that steep, and I was able to get used to it within a day. Then once you're at home with the controls, it's a very clean user experience, and it almost disappears from your consciousness when you're wearing it. You're only aware of the watch when it wants you to be aware of it via notifications. And as someone once said, technology is at its best when it's invisible, and it certainly does that really well. Otherwise, you get access to the large ecosystem that's within Android thanks to Android Wear. App loading could be a little bit quicker, although I have found in my experience this to be an issue across the whole range of smartwatches, and that includes the Apple Watch up until the Series 3. Thanks to its pretty unassuming design, it works pretty well as a general day-to-day -day wearable. Its simplistic elegance mean that it doesn't look out of place when you pair it with any outfit really, whether it be professional, formal, or just general casual day-to-day -day wear. The silicon straps aren't overly dressy, but if you want to change it up, you at least have the option of customising it. I do like to rock this brown leather combo every now and then, because I think it strikes a nice balance between being formal and casual as well. It makes it very versatile. 
then using it from day to day is a complete joy. It sits nicely on the wrist and it's actually quite lightweight as well coming in at 41 grams. That's compared to the hefty 59 grams of the Samsung Gear S3. And what that means is you don't get any real wrist fatigue when using it for long periods of time. And when we're talking about using this smartwatch, it sports a 300 mAh battery which is pretty standard for smartwatches. With general use, I could get about a day to a day and a half of battery life out of it, and that's usually on lighter days. On notification heavy days, I could only barely get to night time, and I've had to throw the watch on the charge on more than one occasion before the end of the day. Turning off the always on display does go a long way to improve battery life, and you can quite often see it stretch to about two days of battery life. But for me, that's a bit of a waste considering how nice this OLED screen is. So for those who actually charge their watches every single night, it really won't be a problem. It also has TickWatch's suite of fitness apps if you choose not to use Google Fit. In terms of overall accuracy and usefulness, only those who are really proactive in tracking their activity are going to get most value out of them. However, for the casual user like me, it'll be forgotten until you experience the annoyance of when the watch reminds you to move. So the TicWatch E is being sold for 150 US dollars or 200 Australian dollars, and you can get the Sportier S version for 200 US dollars or 250 Australian dollars. It makes getting into smartwatches a lot more accessible without compromising on features. And that's what I love about this watch. It can achieve almost 90% of what people will use a smartwatch for at only half the price of its competitors. For those who need a little bit more robust fitness tracking, you can always opt for the S version instead. So overall, I love this product. It's a cheaper option that's clean, simple, and most importantly for me, dependable. Sure, there are more premium feeling smartwatches out there with additional features, but I think when we're talking about the combination of value and features, the TicWatch E is incredibly hard to beat. It's a much more accessible option for those who aren't willing to fork out over $400 for a smartwatch. But in any case, what do you guys think? Do you think this is a great product? Do you like the look of the Tick Watch? Do you think you're gonna buy the Tick Watch? Let me know why or why not in the comment section below. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, give us a like, and if you haven't already, do consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching this video, and if I don't see you before then, hope you have a happy new year, and I look forward to seeing you next year. Say good day, mum, for me. Cheers.